everybody, today I'm going to share with you this Rude Lighting 70 Watt High Pressure Sodium Wall Pack Fixture. And I already have one of these, at least it's designed in my collection, it's a 50 watt version, and it lights both upwards and downwards. It's more of a wall wash fixture, rather than just a traditional wall pack that lights outwards and downwards. So, this one is a more traditional design, we'll see that here when we take a look at it. Now, Rude Lighting, as you can see, is based in Racine, Wisconsin. It is made in the USA. I'm not sure if it's made there or if that's just their headquarters, but pretty cool uh, that it's made right there. It looks like this was originally supposed to be installed above someone's garage, but this got donated to the ReStore probably because its cover has a crack in it, and we'll see that here. Now, I'm a big fan of Rude Lighting's products. Their designs are really nice and simple and their industrial outdoor lighting is a no exception for that. Now they use more of a reflector based design rather than refractors to get the light where they want it to go. Again you'll see that here in a moment. So here's the box. Uh, it was parts and pieces all over the ReStore so I pieced it back together and put it in the box here and was able to pick it up for two dollars uh, because of its condition. So here we have the front, we can see everything about this particular model. There's nothing else on the box, so we'll just tip it up here. Open it up, we are greeted with our cover. As you can see, we have our, our metal here. This is inside, as you can see, it's a thin piece of uh, sheet metal. I've never seen one of these rust, so it must be made out of um, some type of metal that does not rust. I've never taken one out to see if it's magnetic or not or anything like that But you can see the crack here in the re re uh, It's not a refractor. It's just a clear cover But uh, you could take the metal piece out and put it up here if you don't want to see the crack But I I'm just gonna leave it down here so that water doesn't get in uh, I've seen this quite often actually where they get cracked whether it be from heat or just something. This one was probably dropped and that's how it happened. Now the wall wash version that I have has the same exact cover, the same exact plastic mold, and it has a different uh, metal piece inside so it can shine the light upwards and downwards. Of course this was made in multiple different variations with the same uh, fixture. We had uh, down ones with a metal cone inside that would shine the light uh, directly down if you would mount it on the ceiling. Of course we had the wall wash ones, we had ones that were just uh, kind of opaque or translucent and they would just put light everywhere. So there was multiple different variations of the same fixture design. Uh, most of them were simple wall packs like this that just shined downwards. It looks like whoever bought this fixture also included a, uh, a photo cell. They were gonna wire it up somehow because uh, this fixture does not have a port for this size of photos, photo control. So they're probably gonna put it in a separate box or something like that. And there is the fixture itself. Again, we can see the simple reflector here. I'm gonna try to get it out. Nothing else in there. So if you look at it from the side, you can see we have a simple metal sheet to help reflect the light outward. Now they also made a further throw version that would throw the light out more. The socket would be over here and the bulb would be um, horizontal, I guess you could say, rather than uh, sticking directly out. So this one would throw uh, more all over than just direct if the bulb was at a slant. Now the, the um, versions that would shine directly down would have the socket here the wall wash version that i have also has a socket here i'm sure they also made a wall wash version with the socket at an angle so many different versions came out of this simple design the uh, reflector is a little dinged up we do have a, a little bump there looks like we have some hardware and stuff sitting in the socket here uh, we'll get that out of there. So let me go ahead and find whatever screwdriver we need to get this thing open. It looks like we need some type of a Torx style or maybe we just need to get this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and find some tools and we'll get this open.
After taking out our three screws that were holding everything into place, our gasket comes out and we can take off our reflector assembly here. Hiding underneath is a nice rude lighting sticker. You can see their, their website. Let me fix this zooming here. RudeLighting.com. Set that aside and we'll take a look at the insides here. So we have our ballast. It's in advance. And we have our, our igniter over here. Now the 50 watt version that I have actually has the igniter built into the ballast on this side. So it's not a separate one, you can't replace it. Kind of a weird idea, I like the separate one. I was worried this one would have the same thing where it's stuck to the ballast. We have our pulse rated socket noted by the cardboard piece there inside. We have this channel in the middle, and that's just to separate from the, the uh, mounting hardware. They ha there has to be other reasons that they did this as well. Probably so they have something to, to uh, uh, press the top against or to separate heat areas or something. But this fixture idea here was used for all those different designs, whether it be the uh, downlighter for ceiling lighting or the wall wash or just a all over light. This, this fixture was used for all of those. So you could just put a different cover on it and you'd be good to go. Except if it was one that had the bulb uh, at an angle instead of uh, coming out of the fixture itself. So there's not really a spot that's already designated for wiring. I do not see one other than we have one right there next to the igniter. And we have this very nice gasket on the back. It's very thick to keep the water out. You can see the quality control pass here. Somebody was testing it late at night, 7.45 p.m. And we have the details of the fixture itself. So I'll go ahead and put this back together. We'll put a bulb in it and we'll give it a whirl. Now that we got it put together, let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one. Inside, we're using a 70 watt high pressure sodium Phillips bulb. Go ahead and focus on the bulb itself there. And it's already starting to get its fabulous high pressure sodium color. So let's let it warm up. Okay, so I do believe that we are at full brightness now, as the lux meter has stabilized, uh, at least in a, a, an area, it hasn't been going up here, so we're definitely at full brightness right now. Let me go ahead and uh, we'll zoom out a little bit and uh, try to focus on something else and uh, not bump the camera. So, I have my, my uh, meter here. Uh, if we can even see it, I don't want to turn on any other lights or else we will ruin our reading here. So I'm going to hold this about a foot away from the fixture. You can't see it because the uh, camera doesn't go that far. You know what? I'll just move it so we can see what is happening here. You can see kind of the pattern that the fixture puts out. A lot of uh, lines, although it is a very even distribution of light with its simple reflector design. We hold this cover back here, it wants to dangle everywhere. I guess we'll just let it. So we're holding it about a foot away from the light itself, pointing it directly at the light. And um, it's overpowered, so let me fix that. Hold on. 
Okay, so with it being this close, we have a reading that you can probably, okay, there. Now you can kind of see things. Let me just set it down. We're learning today. So about a foot away from the light, we get a reading of, let's see, that would be 6,400 and something, as there's a multiplier of 10 here at the bottom. Of course, the closer you get, the higher the reading will be, naturally. So I was holding it about two feet away while the light was turning on. And uh, let me change the ratio here. So holding it two feet away from the light, you get about uh, 1,500 there, 1,600. Yeah, interesting information. Again, this is Lux, it's not Lumens, so you have to convert it. But it's just interesting to add to the video. I say interesting a lot. There's a lot of things that interest me as long as it's lighting. So, we'll take a look a little closer at the fixture. It's a simple design. It's very quiet. I can't even hear the ballast on this thing. All I hear is the ceiling fan. Yeah, this thing is an incredibly, incredibly quiet. If you're looking at it directly, you can't even see the bulb itself. Very cool. I'm always on the lookout for these fixtures. They're my favorite. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of this 70 watt high pressure sodium rude lighting wall pack. Let's see if we can get the uh, light fixed here. Once again, I really do hope you enjoyed and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.